So I just finished the novel Thrawn Alliances and it ended with some big reveals about the Grisk. But before I go on, I must give some context to some events. So Thrawn and Anakin went to a Separatist droid factory on Makivj. Once they got there, they got some run-ins with some Separatist droids. When Anakin went in to slice up the droids with his lightsaber, the blade would vanish, as well as blaster shots, making it effectively lightsaber and blaster proof. Something even more bizarre happened. They came across some clone trooper armor, which was also lightsaber and blaster proof. They came upon a bin with some material inside. Thrawn requested Anakin to touch his lightsaber to the material, and once again, the blade instantly vanished. Thrawn then explains that it's a metal called Kratosis. Kratosis is explained by Thrawn as a very rare metal that has a very high energy absorption and transmission coefficients, to the point where energy weapon blasts will be dissipated along the fibers without damaging the fibers themselves. So we note what Kratosis does. But why did they use it on clone trooper armor? They theorized that Count Dooku was going to have Separatists wear clone trooper armor for a grand scheme. But without second thought, Anakin gets explosives to destroy the Kratosis mine and doesn't care to think about why Kratosis is being produced by Separatist. Now we flash forward to after the Empire fights some Grisk. As per Thrawn's request, there's a conversation between Vader and Thrawn about where Thrawn's true loyalties reside, whether it's with the Empire or with the Chiss. Thrawn says the Grisk are a threat to the Empire, but Vader doesn't believe him and only thinks Thrawn is doing this for his people. This excerpt gets into some really interesting revelations and answers some major questions about the Grisk. You promised proof that the Grisks are a threat to the Empire. Vader turned to face Thrawn. If such proof does indeed exist. It awaits us in my office, Thrawn assured him. At your convenience. Vader strode past him down the walkway, his cloak swirling. Thrawn's office was off the rear of the aft bridge. Stretching out with the force to wave the door open, he walked inside. Lying in the middle of the desk, taking up half the available space, was a section of half-disassembled machinery. This is the proof, he demanded, as Thrawn closed the door and crossed to the other side of the desk. It is, my lord. It is the inner power coupling mechanism for one of the Grisk gravity projectors. Note the meshwork wrapping the three poles and linking to the shield shell. Vader frowned. The material looked familiar. He stiffened. Cortosis. Indeed, Thrawn said. This is what the Grisks use the material for. Power couplings and energy management. It cannot dissipate the sharp power gradient of their arc cannon weaponry, as you saw, and so is of no use to them as armor. How does that prove Grisk interference with the Empire? I propose two questions. First, how did the Grisks know that Cortosis would be an effective defense against blasters and lightsabers? Vader stared at the Cortosis weave. More of the Jedi's memories seeping back into his consciousness. You suggest they were studying us as far back as the Clone Wars? I do, my lord. A small smile touched the Chiss's face. After all, the Chiss were watching you. Why not the Grisks? My second question. Once the Grisks knew the value of Cortosis against blasters and lightsabers, how did the Separatists gain that knowledge? Vader reached out and touched the edge of the Cortosis with a gloved finger. So many dark, dark memories. You suggest the Grisks contacted Dooku. That they offered him invulnerable battle droids as a way to ensure Separatist victory. Indeed, Thrawn said. I believe their plan was to offer him a taste of such a victory, then withhold it until they had obtained his servitude. But he surprised them. In what way? 
We have now seen the grisk pattern of Jominins, my lord, Thrawn said. On Batu, they forced the Darshi into obedience by holding their ceremonial daggers hostage. With the Chiss, they are attempting to do the same by taking our children. Stealing one species' treasured and honored past, stealing another species' treasured and vital future. But Dooku surprised them. Instead of simply armoring battle droids, he armored both droids and clone armor. I believe that it was that surprise, and the further reconsideration it forced upon them, that delayed the Grisk's movement into the Empire until now. Yes, Vader murmured. Only it wasn't Dooku who'd created that plan. What Vader knew now, what the Jedi had never known, was that the factory was being secretly overseen by Chancellor Palpatine, who saw in the Cortosis an extra guarantee of success for his upcoming Order 66. You said before that they were sealing themselves away. I was wrong. Or rather, my conclusion was incomplete. I believe now that they are ready to make their move and that the purpose of sealing off the region around Batu is to discourage Imperial travel there while they take their final steps toward learning how to manipulate humans the way they have the Darshi and the Chiss. Why can it not be both? They seek to isolate Batu for study and also close all convenient avenues the Empire might use to move against them. Their observations of Clone War battles and subsequent Imperial operations will have taught them that our preferred strategy is to bring large numbers of ships and overwhelming force to bear. Indeed, Thrawn said thoughtfully. Yes, their own combat pattern, according to legend, is to use many small groups of warships, each group composed of only a few vessels. It is a strategy designed for infiltration over a large area, instead of immediate massive conquest. Especially when such infiltration is accompanied by reluctant allies among their target's populace. Before elaborating on what was just explained, it is also revealed that one side of the Chiss Ascendancy is under control of the Grisk. So, with all this information, it is a testament that the Grisk are a huge threat not just to the Chiss Ascendancy, but to the Empire. Since the Grisk have access to Cortosis, and they have large numbers of warriors, they can be a big issue going forward with the Empire. It's also really interesting to think that there was a possibility for clone troopers to have lightsaber proof armor, which was ordered directly by Palpatine. It makes me wonder if any Jedi would have survived Order 66 if clone troopers had Cortosis armor. Also knowing that they've been around since the Clone Wars, it's interesting to see how much these Gris know about how the Republic and Empire operates, and if they can discover any weaknesses. Well that's about it for this video. Very interested to see what happens with the Gris going forward, and if they will be a true threat to the Empire.